Good morning. Welcome to Willow Creek Press Church. I'm Pastor Tanya. I'm so good to be together to celebrate faith and community today. I have a few announcements, but check out the back of your bulletins for all of the information. First, thank you to everyone who helped a family that recently immigrated by donating basic household supplies. This little brick church in Argyle not only filled up the list of items requested, but also it was done and taken care of a whole week early. Thank you for your continued support by caring for those in need. This Tuesday the 17th at 8 o'clock is building and grounds meeting. 5.30 is worship and music. That is a different time, so put that in your calendars. Wednesday the 18th at 8 o'clock is men's coffee at Boone County Family Restaurant. Thursday the 19th, 11.30 is ladies meet and eat at Sophia's. And at 6 p.m. is bell choir rehearsal. Next Sunday is our annual Kirkin worship service, including bagpipes and blessing Oh the tartans. All are invited to bring a tartan. There will be potluck following the service. Each household is asked to bring a generous dish to pass. Drinks and place settings will be provided. And join us Sunday the 29th at 9.15 for Adult Sunday School. We are revisiting the testimony series and you don't want to miss it. Our stewardship season also begins September 29th. The theme is gratitude. Rise Against Hunger is in the middle of the stewardship season, October 6th, because service to others is central to who we are at this church. Are there any prayer or joy requests today? Yes. Okay, so Brenda has a friend that has uh, a lot of prayers needed for quite a while for a change in her situation in life. Thank you. Anyone else? Lauren? Uh, we do need to consider for uh, Steve Paulson. He will be having, um, um, it's a double bypass surgery, am I getting that correctly? Um, on Tuesday morning. And the need for this was found um, through a series of doctor's visits, so he didn't have a heart event that landed him here, so that's very fortunate. But they found that there was a need for the double bypass, and so that surgery will be Tuesday morning. Um, so prayers for Steve, for his care team, and for Dale, and for their whole family as they pray and care for him through this um, very serious surgery. So prayers for Steve. Ron? And that's for our neighbor up at the lake house. The um, it's going to hit his family hard. He's only 44, so that's a big change in their family unit. Any other prayers? So friends for a prayer and co-worker. Any other prayers or joys? Yes. Oh, that's so wonderful. We have a cancer ringing bell, which is always exciting and awesome, and that's quite a joy. 
Anybody else? Let's pray. Dear God, your love is boundless, and it surrounds us like a warm embrace. As we gather in this church service today, we are reminded of your unwavering affection for each of us. Your love knows no bounds, and it is a source of comfort and strength. We thank you for this indescribable gift of love and ask for your grace to overflow in our lives. Amen. Please rise, embody your spirit, and join me in our call to worship. Every generous act of giving is a tribute to God's love for us. Be, be ready to listen and slow to react in anger. Keep your hearts and spirits ready to serve the Lord. Lord, open our hearts to hear and respond to your words of life, ministries of hope and peace. Let us worship and sing to the God who loves, tends, guides, and sustains us. Let's remain standing and sing together hymn number 353, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. Let us trust God's mercy and enter the liberating water, waters of forgiveness and grace. Together, let us boldly confess our sins and acknowledge our need for forgiveness. Wisdom cries in the street, but we do not listen or understand. The words of your law are spoken, but we rarely pay heed or obey. You call us to declare who Jesus is for us but we can't seem to get the right words out. Our tongues engage before our brains do. We want so much to be a people who are faithful to your word and led by your guidance, but we are so easily distracted by the corrosion of words and sounds. Forgive us when we are quick to speak.
Here are silent prayers of confession. Amen. Those who listen to the words of wisdom will be secure and live in ease. Know that our God never ceases to reach out in love and forgiveness, guiding us on the path of life and righteousness, calling us to claim our true identity as disciples and beloved sons and daughters of the living God. A word of peace can have awesome power. Let us share the signs of this peace in the name of the one we follow. We share the peace of Christ with one another, saying, May the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. Will you join your hearts with me in prayer? Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, illumine the sacred page. We pray that our minds may be open to receive your word, our hearts taught to love it, and our wills strengthened to obey it. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. I'm finding the right one here. I apologize. There we go. Sorry. This morning reading comes from Psalms 19 and is found on page 858 in your pew Bibles. Listen, Listen for God's word. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they reveal knowledge. They have no speech. They use no words. No sound is heard from them. Yet their voices go out into all the earth. Their words to the ends of the world. In the heavens, God has pitched a tent for the sun. It is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber like a champion rejoicing to run his course. It rises at one end of the heavens and makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is deprived of its warmth. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. By them your servant is warned. In keeping them there is a great reward. But who can discern their own errors? Forgive my hidden faults. Keep your servant also from willful sins. May they not rule over me. Then I will be blameless, innocent of great transgression. May these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. This is the word of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord.
And all God's people said. My husband Ron will be leading the children's moment. Well, Ron and the kids, please come forward. Have we got all the kids up here? I guess that's enough, right? Nobody else wants to join us? Okay. Well, you know what? I'm going to need some help today. Who wants to be my helper today? We're going to, I'll, I'll use both of you. How's that? Can you guys make a pie? A pie? Uh, no, I don't even know how to cook. That's all right. I, I can't either. I can't make a pie either. But you know what? I have to make a pie for later on today, so guess what? Guess what I've got? <laughs> guess what I've got? I'm not going to use pie in the face. No, I'm not going to spray you in the face with it. But I'm going to let you hold. I know how to do it. I know how to do it now. You just pour the whipped cream Okay, well, that's what I'm, I, I got. I got to have whipped cream for the pie, so I got to see if I got enough whipped cream here. Can you help me? You hold this. And Emma, you, you, you spray it, fill it up. Fill. Keep going. Okay, well, I guess that's good. Now what? Now what? Well, I guess I got enough whipped cream here. Um, seeing I have enough, you think you could put it back in the can for me? How? How? How can we? You can't put it back in the can? No, no, I'm asking if you can put it back in the no. can. you put it back in the can? That's usually impossible. You can't. That's usually impossible. It's impossible. Why is it impossible? Because it, it's completely shut. Okay, you know what? You're right. I can't do it either. But here's the thing. Sometimes we say things that are not so nice. And sometimes, have you ever said something to somebody and those words come out of your mouth, off your tongue? And all of a sudden you say, gee, I wish I wouldn't have said that. You ever done that? Yeah, so have I. I have done that many, many times in my life here. So, but once we know once the words that dance off of our tongues and come out of our mouths, there's no taking them back, is there? Kind of like with this whipping cream. You spray it out there in the pan, but you can't put it in the can. If you use too much of it, you can't put it back in the can, can you? No. It's just... That's why we need, we need to learn how to tame our tongues because our tongues are the ones that says the words and we learn, need to learn to use only good words. It doesn't matter if the words are good or bad. There's no taking them back once they come out of our mouths. So ask God to help you use your words only for good. Play, praise God with our words and encourage others. You know how many times love is used in the, word, in the Bible? Many, many times you usually hear the word love, right? Don't use that same tongue you, you use to praise God to hurt other people. So let's pray. Dear God, forgive us for using our tongues to hurt others. Teach us to use our tongues for good and to encourage others. Amen. Thank you. Let's pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So Lauren last week started a short series on James, and no other New Testament book is quite like James. Catchy, practical, and in your face. The book of James jumps straight into the nitty gritty of daily life. James takes the lofty doctrines of the gospel and brings them down to earth. You can't read James without being confronted. James steps on your toes. At times, he punches you in the gut. More than anything, James wants you to do something with the gospel you've been given, to live it out. 
James could have been referred to himself as Jesus' brother. Instead, he calls himself a servant of God. And through his book, he calls us to do exactly that, to serve God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. So today's scripture from James brings a focus onto our tongue. We must be careful about the words that we chose and the spirit in which we speak those words. James' point is that we can wound and we can bless with our words. And often the same words at different times and with different emphasis can go from one to the other more quickly than we realize. Good morning. Today we're going to have our first lesson in how to train a dragon. Step one, get a dragon. Here, dragon, come here, here, girl. <laughs> this is my dragon fireball. Good girl, fireball. I'm a boy, bozo. Fireball, it's not nice to call people names. And it's not nice to call a boy a girl either, bozo. <laughs> it was a mistake. So I was wearing those shoes with that outfit. <laughs> As you can see, dragons have a bit of trouble controlling their tongues. <clears throat> Whatever, Bozo. Wild dragons have bad attitudes. And your toenails are gross. Have you ever cut those things? And truth be told, they can do more damage with their words than with fire. You want to put those words to the test, Bozo? So we have to teach our dragons to tame their tongues. What are you going to do with my tongue? Fireball, tongues are for tasting food and praising God. Yeah, big deal. Big deal? Tell me, Fireball, do you really think you should use your tongue for praising God and calling me a bozo? Mm, I guess not. Very good, Fireball. I think Silly Head is a better name. That's not what I meant. <laughs> I know what you mean, human, and you're right. I shouldn't praise God with this tongue if I'm going to call you Silly Head or Bozo or Ding Dong. So what should we do with our tongue? Well, since God may be the beautiful, wonderful dragon that I am, I need to praise God. And instead of using my tongue to call you a bozo, I should use it to say nice things and encourage people. Very good, Fireball. You know, human, you are pretty decent. You always feed me well, always make sure I have nice straw in my barn. Why, thank you, Fireball. I do my best. And even though those shoes really don't go with that outfit, <laughs> you're a lovely woman. There, I said it. You look nice. Well, thank you, Fireball. And always remember not to use the tongue that praises God to hurt other people's feelings. I will not use my tongue to hurt other people. That's what fire is for. What? <laughs> Just kidding. Say goodbye, Fireball. Goodbye, Fireball. <laughs> When you think of dragons, what images come to mind? Dragons are usually depicted as giant, scaly creatures like reptiles or dinosaurs. But nearly all dragons have one thing in common. They can breathe fire. Dragons are always using the fire to wreak havoc. They breathe fire on castles or attacking knights and on tiny villages. That fire gives them great power and a deadly weapon but it doesn't make them very popular. If books and movies are to be believed, those deadly creatures known as dragons can be trained to be friendly and helpful. That's why I chose dragons to help us tame ourselves and our attitudes, so we can be people who share God's love with others. With God's help, we can learn to have the right attitude in any situation. That training has to start with the deadliest part of our body. No, we can't breathe fire, but there's a small part of our body that is just as deadly and dangerous as a fire. Let's read what the writer, writer of James has to say about the untamed tongue. Our second scripture reading today comes from James 3, verses 1 through 12, found on page 1883 in your pew Bibles. Listen again for God's word. Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect, 
able to keep their whole body in check. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small udder the, wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind, but no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. Holy wisdom, holy word. Of all the parts of our body, the tongue is one that reveals the most about our attitude. Our tongue reveals if we are in a good mood or a bad mood. It's a part of the body we use to praise God, and it's a part of the body we use to hurt other people. Think about the last time someone said something that hurt your feelings. When someone called you a name, when someone mistreated you, when someone used words to put you down, it hurt, didn't it? Words hurt more than physical pain. They don't hurt us on the outside. They hurt our feelings. They cut deep into our hearts. They make us feel bad about ourselves. But words can also do good, can't they? When people praise your hard work, it feels good. When a friend thanks you for being there, it makes you feel really good. When someone says something that makes you feel good about yourself, it can brighten your whole day. We can't control the words that other people use, but we can take control of the words that come from our own mouths. It's not easy. And James even says a tongue is the one thing mankind has never successfully tamed. But with God's help, we can take control of our tongues to do good, one day at a time. The first step to taming the tongue is to make time to praise God every day. The more we praise God and thank him for his blessings, the more mindful we will be of all that God has given us. Remembering God's blessings can help us keep a good attitude, and it can help us be mindful that our tongues must be used for good. The second step is to look for ways we can encourage others with our words. Tell others that you love them. Tell them why you love them. Compliment something they have done. Encourage them if they are down, and remind them that Jesus loves them. The third step is to repeat steps one and two every single day. Taming the tongue is a daily practice. We don't have to commit ourselves every day to keeping a rein on our tongue. So don't gossip, don't call people names, and don't hurt people who hurt you. Pray for them and ask God to make you someone who builds others up. With God's help, we can use our tongues to praise God and encourage others. Amen. Please stand as you are able as we confess together what we believe using the Apostles' Creed, which is printed in your bulletin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's remain standing and sing hymn number 450, Be Thou My Vision. We are called to listen to the words of wisdom and to respond with our whole lives. Let us rejoice in what we have been given and in what is ours to give as we receive the morning offering.
God, we hear and we respond to your words of wisdom, your words of call and life. May these gifts, not only of our money, but of our, of our very selves, our words, our thoughts, our actions, be acceptable to you and spread your words of life and love. Amen. Let's once more join our hearts in prayer. Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer, we are reminded today of the many ways words entangle us, the words from our tongues, as well as the empty promises and cruel criticisms of others. We are reminded that you are truth, that you are the word made flesh, the word that was in the beginning with God, the word through whom all things were made, the word that shines in the darkness and will not be overcome. You are the word who guides us and walks with us through every valley. Some of us this morning are in the valley of loss and grief, grief for loved ones, grief for the way things were. Some of us are in the valley of loneliness, having been wounded by the words of others, feeling that our imperfections are too many, to allow anyone to be closer, to really love us. Some of us walk valleys of worry for loved ones who are suffering in ways we wish they weren't, everything from the uncertainties of youth to the pains of aging. It is a deep valley to witness suffering and not know what healing words to say. When we walk in that place, may we remember we do not walk alone, and that our presence reminds our loved ones that they too do not walk alone, and the action of those steps through the frightening season speak louder than any words. This morning we are also reminded of times we haven't just not known what to say, but we have certainly said the wrong thing. We confess how words sparked by exhaustion, short tempers, and long resentments have wounded those around us. Even in the darkness of our sin, you are the word that shines and won't be overcome, so we confess to you, and we ask for your wisdom on if, when, and how to ask the one we've hurt for their grace. Reminded today that the tongue is a fire. We pray for places in the world where the fiery tongues of the powerful have led to wars and other sufferings. We thank you for the reminder that our words matter, the way we talk about people matters, that those in power should be held accountable for the weight of their words. May the powerful find words of peace. May your peace take hold in places it can't even be imagined. May those in power and seeking power in our country also find words of peace. May they speak kindly about all of your children because violence begins with words that dehumanize. Reminded today of the power of the tongue, may we daily seek your words. May we speak your words of truth, grace, kindness, love, and peace. And may we lead lives that encourage others to speak your language of light, justice, and mercy. Promising always to walk with us, when you walked among us as the word made flesh, you gave us the words to a prayer that embodies your law of love and binds us to your followers in every time and place. And we pray it together now, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Kingdom, power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's rise and sing together hymn number 41, O Worship the King, All Glorious Above.
James calls us to be careful what we say. Only blessings should come from our mouths, only things that build up and serve God. James urges us to focus only on words and actions that give, not get, only on things that move the world towards the justice and the joy of God. If fireball can do it, so can we. Now go from this place surrounded by the steadfast love of God, so that in the face of trial and adversities, you will remember that the Lord who has redeemed you every time before will do so again. Go in strength and faith to serve God. Amen.